Thank you, big Jesus. Thank you, everyone. What a beautiful day it is today. Today is the day the Lord hath made. We will rejoice. We will be glad and rejoice in it. And praise God for this blessed day. Praise God for that beautiful music. Praise God for all the testimonies and the Billy Graham and everything that's come out of this church today. I just want to thank Jesus for all of that. I want to thank everybody who's here sharing with us this chance to praise God. And we just pray, Heavenly Father, that the Holy Spirit will continue to flow out upon all of us, Lord God. As we now hear the sermon, let it be your words, Lord God. Let it be your plan, Heavenly Father. Let it all emanate from you, Lord God. In the mighty, mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. It's going to be hard now. I don't need the spirit now. I'm tired out already. Thank you. Wow, golly. You know, when I talk about where that word thinking, it's like I remember somebody saying, What were you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> or, Were you thinking at all? <laughs> you did whatever it was you did. What were you thinking? Ask ourselves that question sometimes. When we find ourselves in a situation that we know we have no business being in. What the heck was I thinking? Which is the key point here today. It's very important what we're thinking. And last week we spoke about prayer. And you know me, I'm all about the Holy Spirit. And I asked the Spirit to communicate to me what is prayer. And what the Spirit told me was, is that prayer is when we're communicating with God in a way that is pleasing to Him. That is prayer. You know, and we have many different forms of prayer. But the key point is, we are communicating with God in a way that is pleasing to Him. So, if we're doing that, what are we thinking about? during the day? That's the question. What do we think about? Isaiah 65, 2 relates to the Old Testament before Jesus came. I have stretched out my hands, the Lord God. I have stretched out my hands all day long to a rebellious people. We've touched on this many times. I've touched on it. Because Adam and Eve were in rebellion. They were in paradise. They had all they needed to have a blessed and prosperous life. But they rebelled against those circumstances that they might have the control they wanted to do it their way. To have the ability to choose to follow their path. And we all know what happened with that decision. And so hence starts the rebellion. The decision through our thoughts to reject submitting to God's plan. And it's very easy to reject the submission to God's plan because it's hard to understand what that plan is. You've got to search for that plan. You gotta listen for that plan very carefully. In fact, you gotta have eyes that see and ears that hear. It's very hard to find that plan. First thing that comes to our mind is what we think we need to do in order to take care of our issues, our situations. So anyway, God has been dealing with these rebellious people all day long. And these people are walking who walk in a way that is not good. Okay? Now this is God talking. Okay? And this is human nature. According to their own thoughts. You see, what makes it so that they walk in a way that is not good? Because 
They walk according to their own thoughts. That's what leads them. That's what guides them. That's what motivates them. The thinking in their own mind, their own thoughts, not being in communication with God, but thinking on our own thoughts. And what happens when we do this according to God? The way is not good. And not only that, we are rebelling against the Creator. Now, you may not like that notion. I think a lot of people have a problem with that. But we come up with all sorts of ways of rationalizing for what we're doing. But as we know, just because it's a good idea, just because it's helping people, just because it makes sense, and we're not hurting anybody, doesn't mean it's God's plan. And we can't expect God to sign off on it just because it makes sense to us and it appears to be good. A lot of good Christians out there, good Christians, not hurting anybody, but still, according to their own thoughts, not in constant communication with God. The only way you can detect God's plan is to be in constant communication with every second, every minute of the day. Now, that was the condition of the human being after the fall. But God had a plan, as we know, to correct that. But Jesus answered and said to him, most assured, I like when Jesus said most assured, you know, that kind of puts the emphasis on, listen, there ain't no question about this, okay? And don't even doubt what I'm going to say in that, because this is what it is, okay? Unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So now we have the path, the means of not living according to our own thoughts and walking in rebellion with God. We now are able, through accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, and believing that he rose from the dead a few days thereafter, and he died for all of our sins, we can now become born again in the Spirit of Christ, and we have the ability to see the kingdom of God as we acknowledge and discover the supreme blessedness that comes from following the Holy Spirit. We will see the kingdom of God. We talked about the Beatitudes. That's how we see the kingdom of God. We have the path. We have the way. And it didn't say that there would be no troubles in this world. It didn't say there wouldn't be any challenges in this world. Because Jeremiah 29, 11, 14, well, what's God have in store for us? Well, God knows the thoughts. Excuse me. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. This is God speaking, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Not necessarily promising prosperity in this world, but saying he will give us a peace and a future and a hope. You see, remembering faith is the substance of hope and the evidence of things not seen. Through faith, we have that hope. We know the future that God has planned for us. God has only good thoughts for us. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. You see, now because of the anointing of Christ and through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can communicate with God every moment of the day and he will listen to us. Didn't say he will do what we want. He said he will listen to us. And you will seek me and find me.
That's the part we have to remember. We constantly have to be seeking God. Through our thoughts, if they're on God and Jesus, we are seeking and communicating. When we stray from that point, you see, we still have to come back and remember to continue to seek Him. And when we seek and keep knocking on the door, we will find Him, but only through persistence and perseverance in that seeking of the Lord. When you search for me with all your heart, all of our actions come from the heart. The man with the pure heart will see God. Blessed is the one with a pure heart, and they will come to see God. You've got to have a pure heart, totally pure, totally dedicated to following the Lord. Not thinking of things for your own self, not concerned with your own interests, but dedicated to receiving the Spirit, believing and having faith in God, and stepping out on that faith and helping your fellow man and finding the plan that the Lord has for you to be fulfilled every day. Every day. But if you've got your thoughts rambling through your head during the day, no. what's the plan? What am I going to do? Oh, something happened. Let me adjust my plan. You're not communicating with God. You're communicating with yourself, your ego. And you're devising your own plan, your own path. You've got to be able to stop that dialogue, stay in constant communication with the Lord. See His presence at every moment of the day. See that presence in every moment of the day. Every moment. And see Him. Hear Him. The wind. Like the wind. What Sherry was saying. Feel the Holy Spirit. Sense the Holy Spirit. Follow it. Sometimes you'll follow it and you not even sometimes when you follow it, half the time you don't even know why you're doing what you're doing. It just kind of makes sense to you. It seems like what you're supposed to be doing. And you're welled up and filled with that Holy Spirit because all you've been doing is thinking about God. You ain't been dwelling on your situation. You haven't been dwelling on your problems. You haven't been focusing on what you want or what you need. You've been focusing on God, communicating, showing praise, being grateful. Philippians 3, 20, 4, 1. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we will also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body that it may be conformed to his glorious body, according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. Be anxious for nothing. Think these thoughts. We're not supposed to get overwhelmed in this world. Because if we're overwhelmed in this world, our thoughts are on this world. We're supposed to be thinking about our citizenship in heaven. Having the faith and the knowledge of knowing that God has a plan, He's prepared a way, and all we have to do is understand when one door shuts, the other door opens. You see, sometimes, like we said before, we want to hold on to something that's dead. We just want to hold on to it. We don't want to let go of it. Like Kenny said, he realized that door is shut now. It's been shut. It's been shut for a long time. And the other door has been open. You see, but we don't always want to go through that other door. Because we're not thinking about what the Lord has planned for us. We're thinking about what? We have planned for us how we see the solution. And if we're anxious about whatever it is that's happening, 
we're not communicating with God. You see, when I first got that news, I was anxious. You know, and I'm starting to scram, damage control. How am I going to get out of this one? Oh my God, Lord help. You know, then, you know, who can I blame this one on? Well, I ain't nobody to blame on but myself. But, you know, I'll try and find somebody else out there. You know, some kind of situation to blame it on. Ain't nobody to blame but myself. Okay. Because I was just doing what I wanted to do. Ignoring all the signs, you know what I mean? Focusing on what I felt I wanted or what I deserved or what I needed to do. My plan. But God said, not so. He sent me a wake-up call. You know what I'm saying? That's how it works with us. That's the beauty of the Lord. When we get off track, He'll allow the enemy to put that trial upon us. You see, to change our ways. And I finally dawned on me, this was a perfect example where now, I got down on my hands and knees and I thank God for that trial. I still don't know how I'm going to get out of it, but I thank Him for it. Because I know in that trial, all I had to do was just watch and the blessing from the Lord would come. I know it's going to come. It's going to lead me in a direction I wasn't seeing. You see, I was on my path. God said, my son, there's another path for you now. Do you hear me? Can you see it now? Yes, I see it. I hear it. I'm grateful. I'm happy. I'm in here singing like I ain't never sung before. Because I'm happy. I hear my brother crying in desperation, overwhelmed. But I know the path I see it for. We already know what that path is. But in times like this, if we can't make it, we got to fake it. Let that door shut. Let go of that dead body. Go through that open door where you don't know what's going to happen. You don't even know if, how you're going to do it. But you just know the blessing is going to come if you just take it day by day. Stay in the moment. Communicate with Jesus every second of the day. Ask Him, what do I do now, Jesus? What's my next step, Jesus? And have faith in His direction. Think those thoughts. Don't be anxious. Proverbs 16, 3. Key verse right here. See, when you get to that point and you're ready to follow and you see it clearly, and now you understand that you're going you're gonna to be in prayer and communication every second of the day now. It, it, it doesn't even matter if it makes sense. It's just what you're going to do. And you know if you told other people that, they think you were crazy. The world's not going to understand that. The world don't have nothing to understand about that. Commit your works to the Lord. You see, when you get at that point where you're ready to do all this, you just got to commit your work to the Lord. You see, you say, Lord, I don't know. I trust you. And I'm with you. And I'm committed to you. And I'm going to give you 150%. Which means that you might have to step out of that comfort zone a little bit. You might have to do something that you're not really ready to do or you haven't done for a long time. Or you may, may not never have done this. But you've got to think outside that box, you see, and allow that spirit to come in and be ready for something that doesn't make any sense to you, isn't anything you're comfortable with. But you know what? You're going to do it anyway because you feel that spirit moving you like the wind. You listen, you feel it. You listen to it. You don't know where it's coming from. You don't know where it's going to take it. That was the verse. But you go ahead and you follow. Because you're of the Spirit. And you're walking with the Spirit. Commit your works to the Lord. And your thoughts will be established. 
You see? That's how you stay in constant communication with God. You commit your work to God. You step out on that faith. And those thoughts will be established. You're not going to be looking at your circumstances anymore. You're not going to be wondering about whether you can or you can't. You're just going to go ahead and do it. And be strong and do it. Because you know that's where the Lord is leading you. And you know you won't fail. You believe. You have faith. Luke 12, 31. We're going to see that kingdom of God. You see? We're going to see that kingdom of God. And all these things shall be added to you. All the things that we want to worry about. All the things that we want to stress on. All the things that the world tells us we have to get on our own. You see? No. We got them. Is there one person in this room here today that doesn't have every single thing they need to survive in this world? And you can step out today and every day moving forward and just seek God's kingdom first and His righteousness. And you will continue to possess all those same things. I guarantee you I guarantee you. So now, like I said in my testimony, I'll roll it up now. Okay? I'm encouraged. I'm encouraged by this trial. I thank God for this trial. I know the blessing is coming. I can see on the horizon. And I'm going to stay joyful in the Spirit. And I'm going to move with the Spirit. And even when the world tells me, why are you doing that? What are you thinking about? I know why I'm doing it. Because God's telling me to do it. And I know what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about Jesus. I'm thinking about communicating with God every second of the day. I'm thinking about staying in the moment with Jesus I'm thinking about fulfilling his plan. I'm thinking about all the things that I do because I am a child of God. And I know that this world is not what I'm really concerned about. It's a perishing world. It will end one day. Even if you don't believe in God, all you got to do is turn on the TV and know that one day a meteorite's going to come down here and wipe us all out. It's just a matter of time. And if you don't believe that, you know that the sun's going to die out and it's going to increase in size and, and swallow up the earth. So this planet ain't going to be here forever. It's a perishing world we live in. And I'm putting all my eggs in the basket in heaven. And that's where I'm living right there. That's where my spirit is right there. That's where my mind is right there. And I just give God all the praise, all the honor, and the glory. And I am grateful. I ain't going to think about nothing but Jesus and about what he has for me to do. And I'm going to do it like a soldier, like a Spartan would. Okay? <laughs> I'm going to be a Spartan for Christ. Praise Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus.